Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today we're going to be talking about the scary forest iceberg, and here I'm with my friend Aiden. Hello, everybody. And uh, we're just going to go uh, tier by tier. So this is the whole iceberg. Uh, we got eight tiers in it. We start off with natural occurrences. Then we go to uncomfortable, mind wandering, head on a swivel, unsafe, skinnies. I'll have to describe that later. I'm in danger, and you're done for, buddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a few tiers on this thing. Uh, so, uh, this is a tier list we made by ourselves in about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so... we probably should take more time on it, but I guess uh, we'll figure it out as we go. So, we can't think of any more things to put on it, so I guess we're fine here. Feel free to let us know. We'll look into trying to make an updated version of this if there is any want for that. So, yeah, just let us know your suggestions. All right, so we're going to start this off with talking about the natural occurrences section. This is a basic section that just occurs something you might expect more often if you are going out into the woods camping, something you're not too scared of, just something that's uh, situational. It might not be that rare of something and it might not be that terrifying or result in anything bad, but it's something you still think about when you're going out. Oh, we're gonna group the first three things in the iceberg kind of together we got bears moose and wolves so these are basically three animals that roam the woods they're obviously scary in some extent there's some um somewhat scary uh creatures to come across because obviously they're gonna be in the woods that's where they live that's their habitat so it would make sense if you did see them but it is kind of scary if you come across a bear or signs of a bear wolf or moose you'll you'll want to run but you're not in as much fear as you could be in certain situations honestly in some situations bears can be absolutely terrifying like black bears normally just run away from you if you make loud noises now grizzly bears on the other hand they're a lot harder to get rid of especially if you see like a mother grizzly bear near their cubs they're gonna defend that cub so if you're near there you better fucking run or just play dead that's like your two ways of getting out yeah, basically, I'm assuming that when it comes to situations like these, it also could be where you are in somewhere where you're safe, so like a cabin or something, and you see a bear or a wolf or a moose outside. You're not very like scared of it being there because you're inside somewhere safe. They're outside where they don't know you're there, so you aren't in danger pretty much whatsoever. Right, right, and moose, like as an animal, are just huge, and they're just kind of big and they they are known to once in a great while just charge humans and same with wolves like only, they'll only attack humans if they're really 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 hungry and they like have to get food so it's not really that much of a threat also going along with animals we'll go with animal tracks for some reason for me like if i see like a predator's animal tracks more scary to me than actually seeing the animal i don't know why but yeah so uh from some experiences being in the woods you might see a fox here and there and it's not really that scary or something you're worried about because it's just walking across minding its own business um but there's the situations where you run into tracks they could be from various animals foxes all the way up to moose and some things like those you might be wanting to see maybe if you see deer tracks you'll kind of try to look for the deer but when it comes to some like smaller paw marks or something that may belong to something bigger like a bear or something smaller like a wolf or fox you might be more inclined to feel fear just thinking about what could be in your vicinity and that you don't know about right and i think it's just terrifying that like you don't know if the animal sees you but obviously if you see the animal it's like oh there it is but if you think about it it's just could be anywhere honestly so uh, next we got uh sticks breaking and this kind of like varies because normally it's just a normal occurrence you hear sticks breaking it's probably like oh it's some animal or some some bird or just sticks fell off the tree but there's always that like part in your back of the mind is like is there something big that's breaking sticks that's coming towards me yeah when it comes to uh spending time out in the woods maybe you're hiking or maybe you're at your own uh base of operations you might hear sticks breaking and that can be scary sometimes if it's later in night or 
if you're not expecting something to be around you but it always could just be you're walking through the woods you maybe stepped on something and it broke maybe something fell or another animal knocked something out of a tree it, it can be something little most of the time that's what it is but there are it, it's still that thought that you might be surrounded by something that broke a stick and it might be watching you it's usually just a small animal if that's the case but you never really know all right now we're gonna move on to tier two this is gonna be the uncomfortable things that might make you turn your head around and maybe just like look around yeah yeah so let's uh start off the first thing we have in the uncomfortable uh tab is footprints so this is mostly talking about human footprints like let's say you're in a very isolated part like it says and you just see some human footprints and you're like hmm, what was this person doing it's even especially more like terrifying if they're barefoot because uh that might point to some stuff that are in later tiers that we'll have to talk about later but the footprints is really describing like human-esque footprints like my mind wanders to like bigfoot footprints that are larger like so another thing you could say for footprints is something you might not know it could be a footprint of an animal that you haven't seen before while hiking or it could be something larger more resembling of bigfoot or a larger creature of the such our next thing in tier two is going to be night so just in general even like my experiences just hiking or just being in the adirondacks so like my grandpa has a cabin let's say i have to go out to pee at night i gotta walk to the outhouse and i don't have a flashlight my eyes are always watching seeing if anything is there and if i do have a flashlight i'm flashing it around 24 7 seeing if there's something around me because it always feels like there is something around me the unknown is what my mind wanders to in the night this is a good point to bring up because when it comes to the night it's scary at any point of the night so if it's just becoming night you're still walking there's still some light but you see the sun start to set it gives you an eerie feeling almost of you got to get back before it is fully dark because you don't know what's out there it, it's kind of hard to know what's around you especially when it is darker out because you can't see as well uh, as a human you just don't have the greatest eyesight and it's sometimes can be sketchy trying to walk around not knowing where you are or what's up so i think it's a good point to bring up night on this tier all right next we're gonna move on to broken branches so what my mind wanders to when i see broken branches or peeled bark but peeled bark could most likely be deer rubbing their antlers against trees but when i see like a bunch of broken branches the kid me thinks bigfoot because uh bigfoot supposedly build stuff out of like sticks and such but uh broken branches could be large animals could be pointing to large animal dens like bears such, stuff like that Another thought of mine when it comes to uh, seeing broken branches is it could be something was trying to run away from something and protect itself. Uh, it could be a smaller animal running away from a bigger predator of its, or it could be a human running from something, or it could be, for some reason, a large predator running from something it's scared of, which could be something that just makes a noise and they don't want to be around, or it could be something we don't really know about. Alright, so next we're going to move on to orbs. So, orbs are supposedly um, uh, spirits or like some ghost that's in a little ball for some reason but the reason it's so high up on this iceberg is because i am like 95 percent sure it's just dust in the air yeah i'm the same way i don't really believe anything about orbs when i see them or see something about them i usually am just inclined to think that it's nothing uh, most of the time it is a small sighting on a camera or something and it always to me just looks like dust floating right in front of the camera because if you've seen people test dust by pouring it in front of a camera it looks almost the same most of the time so i wouldn't be surprised if it was nothing but it is kind of an eerie thing if you do catch it on like a trail camera and nothing else looks like it throughout the entire footage you've recorded but it's not too scary so i wouldn't put it past being just dust right and also my grandpa actually had old digital cameras and what i go to when i think of orbs i used to take cameras or er, uh, pictures on his cameras when i was a kid and we did see orbs because his house is like 1860s and 
One of the orbs I distinctly remember had a human face in it. I'm sure it was just the camera warping my face into that specific area, but still, it creeped me out. Alright, on uh, next we're going to move on to human encounters. So, this is really specific because, like, if you're in a known population area, of course there's going to be other people. But, like, say you're on a very isolated trail and all of a sudden you see another person and you're like, oh, hey. But, is this person going to kill me? Like, <laughs> like that's what, what I wanted to. I don't know why I think it's creepy, but like in a very, very isolated place, other people is strange to say the least. I agree with that fact. And sometimes to me, I think about when you're hiking on a trail, it might be a hiking trail that's you used for hiking, obviously, but sometimes it could be in a more isolated area that you're not expecting to see other people, but it's always the possibility. Uh, there's also those times where you're hiking in a more populative area and you'll you you assume you'll see people around but when you do see them it's just still kind of unexpected and there's also the times where you're in the middle of nowhere there shouldn't be anyone else around and there might be someone you see their car parked by a trailhead or something or you see them walking on a trail in the distance but they're not really close to you and there are some weird people you can run into on these trails that will try to talk to you or try to start a conversation and it might just make you uncomfortable because you don't really know what the fuck they're there for so uh let's move on to the next thing uh fog so just fog in general it goes with night it's very eerie you blurs your vision of course and you just i don't know it's just always creepy to me no matter like where i am fog and especially in the forest foggy forest that's just uh not ideal especially when you're in the forest it doesn't really matter time of day it could be bright out or it could be dark out it's still sketchy you don't know what you're gonna see you don't know if something bad could happen maybe you run up on a dirt road and there's something in the distance but you can't make out what it is because the fog is so heavy it's always really eerie being in even a lit place in the forest when it's foggy out because you still can't see what's around you even if it is day and you almost have the same fear that you do maybe even worse than you have when it's nighttime outside because you're not really too as scared about nighttime because you expect that but fog is such a weird thing to have happen especially when you're spending time in the forest that you just get creeped out naturally and it makes sense to be right that's gonna wrap up uh tier two and then we're gonna move on to tier three all right, so in our uh, third position here for tiers, we have Mind Wandering. This tier is basically about when you start being paranoid about situations that may happen by around you or you hear some noise and you immediately assume what it could possibly be. This is mostly for fear of mind more than fear of actual occurrences. All right, so we're going to start with our first entry, which is going to be a local legend, so... There's always those creatures you hear about in your local place in the forest, like in the Adirondacks, let's say. There's local Native American legends of the Wendigo, so the Wendigo specifically is absolutely terrifying to me. If it is real, of course, but I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> and uh, these local legends, they're usually not as scary because you can usually chalk them up to that just legends, but... There might be some truth around them and your mind starts to wander like is is that really true or is that just uh made up so another thing to touch on local legends is there's situations that you might hear of people going missing in different woods and sometimes when you hear about people going missing you also hear about something that might be talked about like people come up with their own reasons as to why they make up creatures or there could be the real creatures that they're talking about and just no one believes them for some reason but we'll never know what it really is if we never truly see them so it's kind of up in a higher tier just because we don't know what these local legends could be or if they could be actual truth or they were just made up by someone who wanted to get some popularity all right so uh next we're going to talk about paranoia and i know you have a lot more to say than i do so i'm gonna let you start off 
to um, start off paranoia, I have a lot to say about this because there's a lot of situations that this could arise. So uh, there's situations where you could be walking around the woods, you might hear leaves rustle, and the first thing your mind goes to is something is right behind you, something's in that bush, and it's going to jump out and try to attack you or it's going to keep watching you. And it can honestly be pretty scary, especially when and we'll touch on this later in the next tier but like you feel like you're being watched you might expect that you're being watched or something so another thing i want to touch on for paranoia are nightmares uh, the last thing you want to have while you're sleeping in the woods or spending a night there somewhere in a forested area are nightmares nightmares are very scary especially if you are sleeping alone in the woods you genuinely don't want to be awoken by a the fear of being attacked or the feeling of falling which i know most people have definitely felt while sleeping you don't want that to wake you up especially when you're in the woods because you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't know where you are nothing feels right and you just get very scared of what it could mean if it means something was scratching if you heard scratching in your nightmare or if you heard talking in your nightmare, you wake up and you might assume that you actually heard that talking happening there. It just boosts your paranoia tenfold if you're sleeping in the woods and you hear that. Right, and I especially have experiences with paranoia, like when I'll be hiking in the woods and I hear sticks breaking, I feel like I hear, I feel like I'm being watched. I feel like I'm hearing someone walking behind me, but you never know if that's just paranoia or there is something there and that's what elevates some of these things to different tiers because uh sometimes it actually is there and it makes it even more terrifying all right next thing we're talking about in this tier is hearing gunshots so this can be especially scary if you have no neighbors you're living in the forest and there's just nothing around you of course most of the time it's just maybe target practice so uh in this uh hearing gunshots category there's some situations where it is not as scary and i'll start talking about some of those where you're in a more local neighborhoody ish area even though it's still in the woods you might hear gunshots here and there especially if you're could be in a situation where it's hunting season there are people out hunting and you're in a known area for hunting it's something you would expect but when it comes to being in the middle of nowhere a desolate area and you hear gunshots it might be more sketchy because you aren't expecting there to be people but again it's not really something you should be necessarily scared of because you are in the middle of nowhere and some people well, might like hunting in the middle of nowhere because they have a higher chance of finding something another thing i want to talk about when it comes to hearing gunshots is when it could be a mysterious time maybe it's in a time point where there are no active hunting seasons or maybe there's nothing around no local animals really and you hear gunshots it could be something more sketchy definitely you shouldn't be hearing gunshots at night most of the time when people are hunting so you might just keep your eye out if a situation like that arises when you're in the middle of nowhere the next topic we're going to talk about is mountain lions and this is really on its own in this tier it's just it's just so deep down because mountain lions are one of the only animals on this planet that go after humans like they will purposefully hunt you down it's just crazy they're there's really nothing you can do about them you can't outpower them you can't outswim them you can't outrun them you can't out climb them it's it's a natural occurrence but it's terrifying in itself they're just like apex predators it yeah there's not really too much to say about mountain lions when it comes to what they are they're just very aggressive predators that aren't afraid to take on a human if they end up in a situation where they feel they need to or they're threatened or maybe they're just hungry and need something to eat humans aren't a big threat to them especially because they are insanely strong animals in and of themselves they are extremely capable of pretty much anything better than a human when it comes to being in a situation where they're fighting so if you don't have a weapon to fend it off with you are in a very tough situation to get yourself out of and you might not even be able to so next uh, topic we're going to touch on is alone or just loneliness you are by yourself in the woods my mind as the tear says just starts to wander when i'm hiking alone it's like every little sound i hear could be something coming after me it's 
pretty terrifying, especially if we're talking alone at night. That itself is dropping the tear. Like, that... It, that's terrifying. It's especially sketchy when you're in a situation where you're used to being around a lot of people and you end up in the woods alone maybe or with maybe one other person. You kind of feel like there's nothing else around you, no civilization. You have no idea what's going on in the real world, especially if you don't have any cellular reception. So you just, you kind of panic internally, not knowing what really is going on around you and you might want to get out of there or try to find somewhere better to be in that situation if you ever come into it so it's kind of a little lower it's not at the top of the tier list because of how you can be tricked in your mind into thinking that you're the only person left on earth at some points it can be sketchy at points all right next topic we're gonna be talking about is a random talking in the woods and this is gonna refer to the times where you hear people but you don't see people like they are out of sight you don't know where it's coming from it could be coming from your left your right behind you in front of you you really just don't know you just hear people you're sure it's people talking but you just can't pinpoint it yeah it's it's really not too complex of a situation if you hear people talking when you're in the woods or when you're in a secluded area it definitely is sketchy 100 percent of the time that's kind of why it's lower down because it's not something that you're really like okay maybe it's just someone talking because if you're in a situation where you're alone or with a couple other people and you hear voices in the distance maybe and you're not really in a situation where there's a lot of people around it definitely sketches you out or maybe you are in a situation Situation where there's people around it's not something you expect necessarily if you're in a wooded area and suddenly just hearing talking in the distance even if you do maybe have a neighboring cabin or something it's just not something you want to hear around you next topic i'm going to touch on first is going to be military vehicles or just military presence so what my mind goes to is the dennis martin 411 case when i hear military involvement this is when the green berets ended up searching for a missing person but for some reason they took a lot of uncalled protocols like they took radio silence and made sure no one else could hear their transmissions they had their transmissions visible for a few days but they then they went six days radio silence and then they also told people to not follow specific tracks and it was just a dead end and then it's inferred that in those six days of radio silence they ended up following those footprints so my mind thinks of are they hunting some creature that they don't want the public to know about why were the green berets called in for a missing person case when that's usually search and rescue like it's just very strange in that case and then in military vehicles in general like in the Adirondacks itself there's always jets flying over because of Fort Drum and there's always other things but it's always just a really weird occurrence in my opinion yeah so there will be uh situations where you might be in the wood you might be around a military base and you might see like training exercises which isn't all that weird if you do but there's also where there could be a situation going on or it, you're in an area where there really shouldn't be much military presence Presence, and you might see vehicles or helicopters or jets flying around a specific area seeming like they might be even looking something for something or you see them fly past on a dirt road or some back road in the middle of nowhere it's always just a sketchy feeling you don't know if it could be something that the public doesn't know about or it could just be something as simple as they are going to a further out location in the attempt to train their soldiers or something but you never really know if it could be a situation like that or they're trying to hide something it's not that expected that's why it's not too far down because it, it could just be something simple but you always have that uh, thought in your mind that leads to your mind wandering of why are they really there all right and that's gonna bring us to our last thing this tier is cemeteries so what my mind wanders to i've been saying that a lot but this is just me connecting it to personal experiences my mind goes to the cemetery that's near um our cabin if it's in the 1860s all the headstones have mold and like moss yeah so uh when it comes to cemeteries it's i get cemeteries do have a scary feeling to them but they're not something you should be terrified of but when it comes to being in the middle of the woods maybe in a more secluded area a cemetery there from very early times of colonization maybe 
or kind of later when we started getting into industrial revolution and everything like 1800s kind of stuff those civilizations those townships and everything that used to be there and are no longer there it gives you the thought of what could have really happened to them for them to stop being here why did they stop living in this area why didn't it grow any bigger and why is there a cemetery there of all things if it wasn't a popular area to begin with it, it's just kind of sketchy trying to think of or imagine what happened there in the past and why it led to it not being a popular area right now and i know you could attest to the cemetery that's near our cabin it's from i want to say like 1840s to 1900s and some of the stones even had like leg bones and other bones sticking out it's just just creepy um there are some very weird feelings whenever we go to that cemetery because of its location there's nothing around there's no town there's only one store maybe in the like within a decent range of it and it doesn't really make sense because it's a fairly decent size um graveyard and i know there's one kind of in the area at the top of a hill and another one a few roads over where it seems like they're building some houses and everything but it's just very weird having all these large cemeteries in the middle of nowhere it doesn't really make sense and you go into them and you see all these things that you'd expect not to see in a cemetery such as what he said bones sticking out why hasn't this been taken care of much who's been neglecting it is there even anyone there to take care of the cemetery or is it just being left to rot it's gonna wrap up tier three and that's gonna move us on to tier four we're starting to get down there it's starting to get into the the paranormal if you will all right, so our fourth tier is called head on a swivel. These are things that are gonna make you keep turning your head. You're gonna be looking around, you're gonna be paranoid, even more than paranoid. Some stuff is gonna start to go wrong. All right, so our first entry on this is a meth lab or weed farm. Now I'm gonna have to explain this a little more. This is referring to the fact that people have stumbled upon meth labs and weed farms in the forest and ended up getting killed by the people running them because they didn't want anyone to get out and uh yeah it's pretty terrifying like imagine you're just walking through the woods see something you're not supposed to see and they just take care of you it's just it's over uh yeah I, uh, meth lab and weed farm is a topic that i think is a little higher up than it should be maybe a little but because there's situations where you can run into danger you can run into other people that are running something like this and they don't really want you to know about it it's situational though so there's always a chance you run into something that's been there for years or something that's vacant at that exact time that you're visiting it but you can tell people have been there and that's definitely still sketchy and scary and you want to get out of the area but it's not always guaranteed scary fearful event it's just something that you really don't want to see when you're alone or with people out in the woods and our next intro is going to be animal bones this is specifically referring to like very weirdly laid out animal bones or like rotting animal carcasses in very weird locations where they shouldn't be or even like large animal bones because then like you always think what what took out this animal is it something natural or is it something unnatural and also like this could also refer to um piles of animal bones because that would be like a den of a predator and that's always terrifying to think about uh yeah that's all i got for this one yeah and uh touching on the animal bone subject it, it's kind of creepy whenever you see bones uh, most of the time in the wilderness you will run into animal bones of some sort because it is natural for predators to attack their prey and they're not really taking the bones with them but it always just irks you you know something was killed in the area you're at and you see what's left over of it and you just get this thought in the back of your head maybe that thing's still there or what if it's not animal bones but usually it is it's just kind of creepy running into them especially when there's a lot in an area just be wary of that if you're going to the woods all right so next on the list we got abandoned cabins so i have two encounters with abandoned cabins there is a one trailer that's near our cabin in the adirondacks and every time i sometimes walk by it's just 
seems off to me. Everything was just left there and everyone got out in a hurry. And also at night, one time we saw the lights on down there, but the weird thing is it's been abandoned for probably at least 15 years and there was no one there. I don't know where the lights came from. And then another encounter we had with abandoned cabins, me and my friend Scott were hiking in the Adirondacks and we, we saw this little cabin that was just broken down in the in the forest right off the road and it, we didn't even go in it. We couldn't bring ourselves to go near it because of just how eerie it seemed and how off the vibes were. Another personal experience I would like to talk about when it comes to abandoned cabins is when you and I, uh, we went to the top of a mountain hill that's kind of near the cabin and we plan to ride our bikes down it but we stopped before that happened at a at an abandoned barn that almost looked like it had been left alone for a decent amount of time we could walk up to it and peek into it and see old household items old washing machines dishwashers and stuff maybe from the 60s or 70s or something just left there all sitting around old tires and it was just really dark inside but i remember just having this creeped out vibe of is someone going to come back here there's also earlier up on that road a small abandoned cabin but we didn't really go anywhere near it because it was kind of uh wooded off but it still was another creepy situation all right next topic we're going to talk about is creepy siren so there is this one creepy siren i have encountered which was it was an old firehouse it just kind of went off randomly well not randomly i'm sure there was something they're going to but it 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 was creepy it was like really old-fashioned like a 1950s 1960s siren it just sat off with me touching on the topic of creepy sirens i'd like to mention how there are situations where you are in the middle of the woods alone or with people it's dark out or whatever time of the day and you might hear some sort of siren that almost sounds like a raid siren, but usually it's just like a fire siren at a fire station calling local firefighters or something of the sort. But it's always just creepy knowing that there's something going off that you can hear for miles, but knowing there's not really anyone around you. Um, there's also situations where it could be a natural disaster, such as a tornado warning or something of the sort, and you may not know, so you kind of panic internally trying to figure out what it is the what's the reasoning for the siren going off but it, it's always just like a creepy situation anywhere you are so that's just my personal take on it that's just gonna bring us to our next topic the feeling of being watched i know most of us know this feeling and especially on our last trip to the adirondacks especially on the path where the missing person case happened we just always felt like there was something right beyond where we could see that could see us. And every single time we would turn around, of course, we saw nothing. We thought we would hear stuff like right outside of where we could see. It was just different experience, especially uh, on the top of the sand hill. I know Aiden's been there. We always have weird feelings when walking down the back path and it's it just makes you turn your head. All right, touching on the uh, feelings of being watched, whenever you are in a situation where you're not really around people, you tend to get this in-lying feeling of someone watching you from a distance or maybe even up close, you just don't know about it. It's always a really weird feeling and I'm pretty sure most people have experienced it at least once, probably more than that. But it's especially sketchy when you are in the middle of nowhere in a place you might not recognize or just not around civilization and you're, you feel like like you're being watched by something that shouldn't be there you you're constantly nervous or paranoid of what could be around you and you're constantly turning your head looking for something just hoping there's not something there but if there is something there you do want to be able to see it it's just a very stressful situation internally when it comes to trying to figure out why you feel that way and it can really ruin your feeling when you are hiking or walking or doing anything in the middle of the woods especially on those back trails in the adirondacks we always had those feelings that something was just watching us i don't know why but it's just how it is i guess and then that's gonna bring us to our next topic bigfoot and we all know bigfoot we all love bigfoot bigfoot is supposedly a big hairy man that walks around in the woods knocks on trees makes weird whistling noises and uh does other things of the such but the the one example of supposed bigfoots i want to touch on is the sierra camp tapes 
this is recorded audios of supposed Bigfoot um, interactions and conversations. And what was weird, it was studied by a college that said the audio wasn't doctored at all and it could not have been a human vocal cords because the range of the vocals itself are not possible for a human to match. So that's the realest example I can think of. There's also some other sightings like the Patterson Gilman film, but I'm pretty sure that was fake. And all the other blurry pictures out on the internet which can like never be proven or disproven. I really like this cryptid because like there's a bunch of evidence that supposedly points towards his existence, but at the same time there's nothing definitive. It's it always just leaves your mind wandering. When it comes to uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatches, which are relatives or just the origins of Bigfoot, some people think it's up to interpretation because we really don't have any supportive evidence of any of these really ever existing. But there are situations like he described earlier where there's actual feasible believable possible sightings of a sasquatch of the sort and it really just boggles your mind how you could be in the middle of nowhere and there could be something that much larger than you with the capabilities of a human something that really could overpower you in any given situation you kind of get creeped out and paranoid of that too and worried about what could be out there if there is something of that nature that size is that something you possibly run into you never really truly know but you always have that in the back of your mind when you're walking around especially if you've heard any research or seen any pictures recently of suspected bigfoot uh sightings it's just really uh, a creepy thing to think about when you're out in the woods all right that's gonna wrap up our uh, head on a swivel tier and we're gonna move on to the fifth tier of the iceberg tier five is titled unsafe these are things that if encountered will bring a state of panic to you especially in the setting described throughout the video so the first thing on this tier is missing persons in area so what I can relate this to is Earl Eric Dunkel in the Adirondacks. So me, Garrett, and Tristan went hiking on the path to see if we could finally figure out what happened to this guy because he went missing in, I believe, 1993, and not a single speck of evidence has ever been found. Not a piece of his clothing, not his book bag, not any of his hiking equipment, not even, like, fingernails, bones, nothing. So what it points to to me is a homicide or something that we can't really describe, but the feeling that someone was here and was never found ever again just really is unsettling to me and we got really bad vibes the whole time when we we're walking down that path it was just very eerie yes this uh topic is especially creepy considering we've been in the spot that is described or believed to be the location that he did go missing and i haven't personally been there but i've been around the area of that jimmy you've been there obviously uh but it, just the vibes of that area are super off-putting and it almost seems like you are constantly being watched which might be a reason towards why the the guy went missing earl went missing uh because he could have actually been being watched and stalked and when he was alone and at the prime opportunity someone took advantage of that and just took him and killed him or kept him captive or something we'll never really know unless there's any evidence found but after 30 years it's kind of just crazy that there hasn't been anything not a bone or not uh, no one's seen him it's, it doesn't make any sense how he could have gone so long without any human contact it has to be something else other than just natural causes especially happening in the middle of the year where there are no weather events that would really happen local to that area yeah and another thing i want to add to that is uh last time we went we just stayed on the path but uh this time we're going in spring and we're actually going to search the area see if we could find any literally anything that could point to anything that happened to Earl and just give closure to the family. I feel like after this many years, it'd be a great thing to have. All right, and then the next topic is just gonna be footsteps right behind you. So I definitely heard this a few times. I feel like most of the times I can definitely chalk it up to echoes, but sometimes when it's like right out of view, you feel like you hear other people's footsteps and it definitely makes you feel unsafe as the tier says. It definitely makes you feel like there is something right behind you and you should probably get out of the area. It's definitely happened actually on the trail where Earl went missing and there's definitely a lot of weird sounds there. We have a theory to what happened on that trail, but I'm gonna get to that in the next year when we talk about uh, some other cryptid. I'm just gonna hint towards that. And uh, yeah, 
yeah, this is all I got for Footsteps Right Behind You. Uh, something I have to add to Footsteps Right Behind You is a personal experience you and I have experience you probably don't even remember it but uh one of the first times i'm not sure if it was the first or second time i believe it was the first time we were in the adirondacks but there were footsteps outside of the cabin while we were sleeping and i remember that uh waking up or still being awake i can't exactly remember that bit of detail but i remember hearing footsteps around the cabin looking out the windows not being able to see anything but when we woke up we walked outside and there were scratch marks uh around the cabin nothing too serious but still they weren't there prior to that night so it was kind of uh weird just walk out and see that after hearing what we heard but it didn't seem like anything too crazy to that encounter i do semi remember that but I do remember there's another encounter that me and Scott had while just trying to go to sleep in the cabin, and we can talk about that a little later. Our next topic on unsafe is gonna be the sudden change of weather. This doesn't necessarily have to be paranormal, but if you're hiking and all of a sudden the weather goes to shit, it's just a horrible feeling. Like, you're trying to get back as soon as possible and just boom, thunderstorms. You're soaking wet, now it's getting dark. Like, it's just really not a very good thing to happen. I don't have much to say about this one. I have a little to say, not really too much, but there are some experiences we've had. I remember hiking through that around X. It was kind of uh, later in the year, more rainy time for around there. And we were hiking. It was probably middle of the day, so not really a scary time for it to happen. But uh, it did start raining rather quickly kind of started pouring and we had to run back to the cabin and we got back soaked and had to change pretty quick so we wouldn't be cold but it is kind of annoying but it can be creepy especially at nighttime all right and then our next thing is going to be finding hiking equipment i really don't have any experiences with this but i feel like finding abandoned hiking equipment is never a good sign in the area especially if you found like an abandoned tent all the stuff still inside why did they leave so suddenly? What were they trying to get away from so suddenly? It definitely points to more of a paranormal or definitely just an encounter with maybe a large predator of some sort or maybe even humans. It's just uh, doesn't point to a really safe area. Yeah, especially when it comes to uh, finding stuff that might be scattered or thrown on the ground or something. It can also seem like someone might have been taken or attacked and they had to run very quickly. And it always puts you in the state of mind that you might also be in danger from whatever predator or maybe even person uh, went after the original person who left their stuff behind or left their cabin behind. Whatever it is, it's really not that fun to find someone else's stuff especially when it's pretty obvious that they didn't want it's not stuff they would want to leave behind like nice clothes or like supplies and stuff like that so it can be a little scary to find stuff like that but like jimmy said we don't really have any personal experience with this all right and then our last thing on this tier is going to be scratching noises or just scratch marks so I do have an experience with scratch marks like Aiden said earlier. We did find small scratch marks on the cabin, but there was an experience where I did find bigger ones. So me and my friend Scott were sleeping in the cabin. I wanted to say it was getting pretty late. Maybe, I want to say maybe midnight, 1 a.m. around there. We couldn't really fall asleep. And then we're talking about some dumb shit. And all of a sudden we hear a large bang on the door. So we just go silent. We just kind of look at each other like, uh, what was that? And then I want to say maybe 30 seconds later, the bed is pushed up against the wall of the cabin, and on that wall, right next to the bed, you hear scratches going down the whole thing. I pray it was a deer or something like that, maybe just rubbing its antlers against it, but it didn't really sound like that, because deer mostly rubbed their antlers in one place, and it was all down the side of the cabin, so... I don't really know what it could be, but definitely a horrifying thing that you could hear and definitely made me feel unsafe. Yeah, but, uh, besides that, I don't really have any other personal experiences other than the time we did hear walking and not really sure if we heard any scratches, but for sure saw them when we, uh, when we came out of the cabin the next morning. So that's pretty much all we have for that. All right, and then that's going to wrap up uh, tier five and that's going to bring us to tier six. All right, now we are moving on to tier six. This is going to deal with more paranormal stuff along with some cryptids and Native American legends. First thing up on the tier, we have blood. Blood is a very unsettling thing to find, especially when you're alone and isolated in the woods. Let's say you spot a pool of blood. Your mind starts to wander. Where did this blood come from? Why is it here now? Is it animal blood or is it human blood? 
Is someone in trouble? Am I gonna be in trouble? Overall, it's just an extremely frightening thing to find while isolated in the woods. Uh, when it comes to hiking or traveling somewhere through the woods, uh, maybe it's a more desolate area or somewhere where there's uh, more people around, it's always, it, it, there's always the possibility of finding blood. Maybe it was from an animal that was injured, perhaps by another animal, which leads you to have the feeling of there's something around. Could also be an animal being hunted, it got shot and it ran away or it could be something entirely different especially if it's a larger more ominous pool of blood or something looks like there is definitely a struggle that had happened at that location it's very scary to see something like that especially when you're alone and if it were to be nighttime and you see it and it looks fresh you don't want to be around there much longer next interior is ghosts Ghosts can be tied to old locations within the woods or even very old cemeteries, such as the one that's actually near our camp. Now, I can't put ghosts any lower because, of course, we don't actually know if ghosts truly exist or not, but um, that goes for some other things in this tier, but for the sake of the video, we're going to say that they exist. Now, ghosts in general are just absolutely terrifying. But now you add them to the forest, that just makes it even worse. I have some experiences that I believe were contributed to by ghosts, so those were like scarring to me as a kid. And you put that in a very isolated forest situation that's just like horrifying. So for ghosts, it's a very interesting topic because it's not something everyone will believe in or everyone will think is true. And sometimes you don't even think is true, at, even if you do at other times but when it comes to being in the woods your mind runs rampant constantly especially at night another thing to talk about for ghosts is it depends on location you're in so if you're in a location such as a house where someone had passed away before or you're around a cemetery somewhere a very old cemetery even you might get the feeling of being watched or being looked upon from something a higher being possibly a ghost and you never know know in your mind if that ghost that's watching you is trying to help you or cause you harm it can be a very nerve-wracking uh, experience to have especially in the woods and it happens quite often all right next we're gonna have random light so this refers to any beams of light you can see in the forest or beams of light shining directly at you maybe such as a flashlight this can be especially terrifying because you really don't know what the person or thing with the light is trying to do to you why they're looking for you it might seem like they actually are looking for you I personally never experienced this, but if I did, I would just be straight terrified. This listing refers to lights like on the ground and not in the air, because we are going to talk about that later. So more on uh, random lights, it can also be very sketchy if you're walking around in the middle of the night, uh, hiking maybe, or you're just at your cabin and you start seeing lights flashing in your direction or around you but you don't hear anything or you see a car's headlights on in a spot where it doesn't make sense for there to even be a car or be someone else if you're in the middle of nowhere and i think i would be pretty fucking terrified if i were in the middle of nowhere and someone just shined a light at me or around me at that point i would just probably start sprinting and i wouldn't look back it, it, i just would not like to be in that situation so that's gonna bring us up to our next thing cults so cults refer it's a really rough description but it refers to most of the time groups of people in the woods that possibly have cultish behaviors like believing some of them are the sons of god or being spoken to by god or just basically anything that's extremely far-fetched and not real so cults can also perform stuff such as ritual which will also be talked about later so just like put yourself in this person's shoes this imaginary person's shoes imagine that you're in a situation where you run into a group of people in the woods that are just straight out of their minds this is what i would like to imagine that running into a cult in the woods would be like you don't really know their intentions and you can just see that they are crazy and believe in some weird shit and you really just don't know what's going down another thing to talk on uh cults is if you're in a location where there's a lot of spiritual people, maybe a lot of religion, you might be more induced to a lot of people thinking more radical or more crazy. This can especially happen when people are left alone in the woods for long periods of times and don't have much human interaction throughout their lives. They start growing strange mental patterns where they act differently or they treat people differently or they even think differently. Some people use these ideologies to form cults where they at some points can even sacrifice people or animals or 
kill many other people, such as something like Manson, for example. It's also pretty scary if you're in the middle of the woods and you see carvings, almost cult-like carvings, in like a tree or something. So when it comes to carvings or like some kind of symbols, my mind wanders to is the Blair Witch Project. I know that's not a cult, but it's the same idea where people are drawing these symbols and these symbols can just be unsettling in itself. All right, next up on the tier is breathing. This refers to times of silence where you hear breathing that is not yours or, or the people around you. So I can remember a certain experience in the Adirondacks with my friend Scott when we were both woken up in the middle of the night and I swear I could hear breathing just outside on the other side of the wall. Of course, our bed was pushed up against the wall. And I, I swear I could just hear breathing. It didn't sound like an animal. It sounded like a human or something. Human-ish, uh, humanoid, if you will. We also did have an experience with me and Scott back in my home woods that I heard heavy breathing running at us and we took off, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I was just tweaking. But in that experience in the Adirondacks, my body was just completely frozen. I could not do anything even if I wanted to. That's why breathing is this low down on the iceberg for me. Touching on the topic of breathing, I don't personally have any experiences firsthand on anything of the such, but there are the situations where you do think you hear breathing and it's usually smaller ones where you're alone in your room or something and you hear something, but you take your headphones off and there's nothing there. It can get really scary though in those small moments, but if you think about it large scale in a situation where you're in the middle of nowhere, middle of the woods and you heard that exact same thing, you'd probably be freaking the fuck out mentally and trying to figure out where it's coming from, especially if you pay attention to it and you can still hear it, but you have no idea where it is. And when you go to look for it, there's nothing there. That That's just terrifying, honestly. All right, that's gonna bring us to the next thing, dead silence. Now, dead silence is especially scary because it's said that in the woods, if everything goes silent, that there is some kind of apex predator around and that's why everything is not making a peep. So I've definitely experienced this a few times with like birds chirping, leaves blowing in the wind, all of a sudden, nothing. It's a surreal experience, if you will. It's just, I just can't wrap my head around it, but it just doesn't fit well. Now what my mind goes to during dead silence is when me, Tristan and Garrett were walking on the path where Earl Eric Dunkel went missing 30 years ago and all of a sudden just nothing. Birds were chirping, leaves were blown in the wind, and then for solid maybe two or three minutes, nothing. And then all of a sudden it just went all back to normal and then this is my theory, but the thing that we caught on camera followed us from that trail. But we're going to talk about that thing later in this tier, trust. Touching on the idea of dead silence, uh, it's a situation where every once in a while you might experience it if you're in a heavy populated area, such as near, like you live near a highway or you live near or a place where there's often people walking by and you just hear nothing. You can't hear any cars. You don't hear any horns. You don't hear any animals. And it, it can be very weird, but after a little while you'll see another car drive by or something and it'll go back to normal it can be especially scary if you are in somewhere like the woods the middle of the forest when you hear nothing right after hearing a lot of stuff that you're not even used to hearing because if you live in a more densely populated area and then you go out to the woods you will hear more natural sounds like uh, leaves blowing in the wind you'll hear birds chirping animals flying or running around if you get to the situation where you don't hear anything at all and you could hear a pin drop in the middle of the woods your mind goes blank you tend to just feel fear you don't know what's around you or what could be happening you're searching for the sound of any little thing happening but you just can't find a single idea next is my favorite cryptid, the Wendigo. Now, the Wendigo has quite a backstory. Some say it originates from the Iroquois. So, as the Native American legends go, the Wendigo is a creature that, in times of desperation, is a human that has to eat human flesh. Now, let's say someone is trying to survive in the woods and their friend is dying and they have to end up eating them to survive. That would make them a Wendigo in Native American cultures. Basically, any culture where cannibalism is extremely discouraged Native American-wise, they have tales of a Wendigo or a creature like the Wendigo. Basically, the Wendigo, once it eats human flesh, the human 
slowly descends toward a non-human creature that craves human flesh and has some very unique abilities that make it a very, very good hunter. Now, some of these abilities are that they have the ability to mimic human voices, maybe loved ones around you, and even some have the Wendigo shapeshifting, but I feel like that's more of a skinwalker-esque thing but also the wendigo can make its voice sound like it's farther or, ne or near you to draw you out or draw you close to it and basically in all of these stories the only way to kill the wendigo is by fire as that i know of but now i have a different theory of the wendigo my theory of the wendigo is that it is a creature that lives in the woods of the northeastern united states and some parts of canada that lives in caves and is either evolving towards humans or evolving away from humans and both ways it's extremely terrifying to me this points to this creature not being human at all and just being something extremely different and one of the most apex predators on this planet if it truly is real and it could just basically kill anyone and anything in its path if it really wanted to another thing to touch on for the wendigo is i believe that it could be to blame for some missing persons cases that have uh appeared in wooded areas in the northeast if you uh look at where some of these people have gone missing and uh the locations around it's in a space where there's a vast quantity of cave systems that are mostly unexplored by humans and it would just make sense for something of its sort to be able to survive in those caves and only come out when it really needs to. And that could also explain why those bodies have never been found because we've never searched those cave systems that we've either known about or haven't even discovered yet for who knows how long they could have been living down in them. And of course, last but not least, my personal experience with the Lionsdale Stalker. This thing was kind of a joke at first. Me and Garrett were kind of talk about what if there was like a creature that actually was near us and then we decided to go on a night hike and what we caught on our night vision camera is just downright terrifying now this thing looks to be on two feet it looks kind of short not too short but maybe maybe five five and a half feet i want to say i can't really tell if it's white colored but it looks maybe white or grayish colored that's my guess it could be a darker color but you can't really tell with the night vision because it doesn't really have color now the story of this is we were hiking at maybe 11 11 30 12 at night just because we were being dumbass kids we just went down this path a little bit and uh we we were panning the camera around, just kind of around, seeing if we could see anything. I didn't see it in real time on the camera, but uh, then we saw something white standing on the hill, which on only I could assume is the same thing I caught on camera. So we decided to have the bright idea to jog back because I'm not trying to end up in a horror film. So when we're jogging back, we both simultaneously look behind us and we see the thing that we caught on camera about 40 feet away from us, clear as day in the road. He saw it a lot clearer than I did. So all I saw was a white blur that was a lot closer than it was before. So we dead sprinted back to the cabin and we kind of roughly looked over the footage, didn't really see that I caught anything unfortunately and kind of just put it aside but later when we were editing a whole documentary about trying to find Earl Eric Dunkel we saw this thing I was just at a random moment I paused where I ended up seeing this creature I'm gonna flash it on the screen right now it's just absolutely terrifying it almost looks like alienish it doesn't really look like it was from this planet so my theory on what this thing was or is now I hate to connect it to the missing person but since there is really nothing to go off of on that case i kind of have to let my mind wander i think this thing was at the path where earl eric dunkel went missing and after i drove back to the cabin because the first night we had no weird experiences at all in the cabin we slept like babies now the night after we uh, go hiking on where Earl Eric Dunkel went missing. We definitely had weird feelings the whole time, weird vibes the whole time we're hiking, like going silent. And I believe this thing actually followed us back through the whole path, maybe it's like four miles, back to the cabin, and that night, it decided to stalk us. Which is where it gets its name, Lionsdale Stalker, because we technically saw it 
three times only two times in person but that one time we saw on the camera my personal take on the uh, Lionsdale stalker I believe that it I did not see it firsthand or I was not on that trip so I can't touch on ever seeing it but what I believe it is is I think it's a creature that will wait for someone to show up at a location where a missing person was last seen and uh, will follow that person whoever showed up to that location for a decent amount of time maybe all the way home maybe while they're there on vacation or maybe for the rest of their lives i it's not really something i can guarantee i i'm not an expert on anything of the sort or necessarily do i know anything about this creature or if it's even real but personally that's what i believe it would be doing if it were to be real yeah and the thing with this it just makes it a lot more horrifying in my mind is if it followed us those four miles back to the camp while now i was driving in a car what's to stop it from following me back to my actual house and sometimes i do think what if it's just out there what if it's right outside my view still stalking me we might be fucking schizophrenic but me and garrett did see it simultaneously I'm yeah just and saying. yeah i i i what the fuck did we see yeah yeah like, like what the fuck did like see? me and garrett but sometimes you, just go up and work like yo garrett what the fuck did we see you i know we just, you do it all the time we do it. it's so funny because like what the fuck did we see i, I just don't what know the fuck did we see? like this is just being so general like <laughs> still i i have no idea what the fuck it is i don't know if we're gonna keep this in the video but me garrett Aiden, Tristan. So that is a four man that are going to the Adirondacks with literally like we're going with like actual 4K cameras and shit that we're buying, and we're gonna we, try. We, it. Are we, we have a strategy. It. Yeah, we have a strategy. If it is real, and me and Garrett were not just simultaneously tweaking, we have a method that's gonna draw it out so we could record it at night. And uh, that might be for a future video. And that is going to be for a future video. And yes, of fact, we're absolutely going to describe that once we can get maybe all four of us here to just talk about it. We're going to try to chat about our plans and what we plan on bringing, how long we're staying, everything, every little detail and where we plan on walking. And we're going to upload that video before we go. That is going to wrap up tier six i know it was a bit long but uh of course i had to go off on my little rant about the lionsdale stalker and um yeah i'll keep you guys updated if you're actually interested on that and i will link the other videos of us talking about it in uh the description all right now we are gonna move on to tier seven i apologize but aiden's not gonna be here for most likely these last two tiers so the first entry on this uh tier is feral people this refers to some missing 411 cases where feral people can somewhat be blamed because there is really no real explanation that these people could go missing in the circumstances that they did. Now, I can imagine that feral people are absolutely terrifying to come across in the woods, and I know that there is some legends about feral people in, I believe, the Appalachian region. I connect feral people to somewhat like cults because you really don't know what they're capable of, you don't know what they've been brought up on, and they could just be dangerous to you and people around you. Next is uh, screams for help. Screams for help can refer to two things. It can either be a person that's in extreme danger calling out for help in the woods, or it can be a trap of some sort. So I've heard a few stories of people saying that if you hear screams in the woods, you should not go towards them. This also can tie in with the Wendigo because it is said that the Wendigo can use screams of help to lure people closer to it, so it can ultimately take them out. In general, luckily I've never heard these screams in the wood, but if I did, I am getting out of there. Like, I imagine if I heard screams on the path that we were hiking on, I don't really know what we would do because we're so far away from civilization that there's really nothing we could do. Shadow people refers to glimpses you sometimes see around maybe in the dark or maybe inside your cabin you're staying in. So once in a while I do think I see like people or objects in the side of my vision. I've never had it happen in the forest, but it can also refer to shadow entities that sometimes people see or film from time to time. These I imagine can be especially terrifying because nobody really knows what these things are. I've definitely seen videos on YouTube of people catching shadow people. I just really don't know what they are, and especially if you put shadow people in the forest in an isolated setting, I just don't really know what I would do. Alright, the next entry is caves. Caves can especially be terrifying because of all of the missing 411 cases where you can 
see a pattern where all these people are going missing near large cave systems that are mostly unexplored. So many people a year also die due to caving accidents or caves collapsing on themselves. Caves can also be tied to the Wendigo by saying that the Wendigo lives in these caves, which brings a whole kind of terrifying to the table. Now, I imagine me and Garrett hiking through the woods and we stumble upon a cave. We'd probably go in it for a little bit, uh, but we probably wouldn't make it out. Um, I don't even know if I'd go into a cave in the forest, but maybe we'll find one next time we go up. Alright, next up is whispers. So whispers refers to you hearing whispering in the woods, maybe at night. I feel like I've heard whisperings. I pr it probably wasn't anything, maybe just the wind, but it's just a different level of creepy where you think someone is out there trying to maybe harm you, maybe scare you. But it's just definitely a weird thing to hear in the woods, especially if you can tell it's a whispering of a human or something like that. Alright, last on this tier is going to be UFO sighting. Now, I've never really seen a UFO, but I can think of times where I thought I've seen UFOs, and my mind was just blown. So I remember seeing this string of lights in the sky. A good 10 minutes, I was like, wow, there's actually other things out there. But then I realized it was a satellite chain, and uh, it was nothing special, and the f that wasn't even in a forest setting, but I remember that sudden realization of, oh, there's other things out there. Now, I still believe that there's other things out there, but I just don't have any proof. Especially in an isolated forest setting, I just don't really know what I would do if I saw a UFO. I'd probably just freak out. Definitely not a uh, good thing to see while you're isolated in the middle of the forest. Alright, that's going to wrap up tier 7 and we're going to move on to tier 8. Tier 8 has things in it that will just make you freeze in place and just accept your fate. The first thing on the tier is human remains. No matter what situation you're in, if you find human remains, you're freaking out. I have found some human remains two separate times in my life. One time while hiking I found a finger, so let's just say I was freaking out. And uh, the other time, I found the leg bone sticking out of the cemetery near our camp in the Adirondacks. Obviously, that's not as frightening as some situations. If you find human remains in the middle of the forest, you can't help but wonder how that person died. Most of the times, it ends up being natural causes, but you can never really be too sure. Maybe the person was attacked by another person, or maybe something that's completely unknown to us, or maybe just an animal. Overall, just a horrifying thing to find in the forest, and that's why it comes up on this last tier. It can just really be scarring to the person that finds it. That brings us to our next topic, attacked. Now, it's one thing to see a bear or maybe see a mountain lion or moose or something like that, but it's a completely different feeling when you're attacked by something like this in the forest. It's especially a different feeling when you're attacked and you don't know what you're being attacked by or where it is. Imagine you're going outside at night to take a leak, and then all of a sudden, something attacks you from the shadows. Like, there's really nothing you can try to do, except try to survive the ordeal. Luckily, I've never been through most of these situations. Next on the iceberg is ritual sites. Ritual sites are especially a horrifying thing to come across in the forest, and can be easily connected with cults in the earlier tiers. But seeing a ritual site is a different kind of feel. You really don't know what the ritual site is for, and you really do not want to stick around to find out. It could be a satanic cult that performs rituals, or it could be even worse with a group performing sacrifices, or trying to summon something beyond our comprehension. Luckily in these last years, I have not experienced any of these, because if I have, I probably would not be making this video today. Next on the final tier of the iceberg is being chased. Being chased is really a different kind of fear. I've been chased by people before, and even that is horrifying, but now picture you are being chased by an apex predator in the woods, and there's really nothing you can do to get away. You can't really call for help or escape because of course you're isolated in the woods. Most apex predators are almost impossible to escape. I'll use bears for an example. You can't really outrun them, and you can't outswim them, and you can't even outclimb them. Back when me and Garrett saw that thing in the Adirondacks, there was a brief second where I worried that that thing was chasing us back. I have never felt uh, so fearful, and I never ran so fast. Luckily, it didn't, and we managed to get back to the camp unharmed. But when we saw that thing on the hill, and then we started running, and we turned back, and it was closer, I really thought it was coming after us. I thought it was done for us. That's going to bring us to our last topic, serial killers. 
If there is a serial killer in your area, chances are there's woods near you that they use in some way. Most of the time, serial killers dump their victims in isolated areas such as the forest. Now in other cases, the serial killer uses the isolation of the woods to trap their next victim. Overall, the concept of a serial killer lurking in the woods just out of sight is absolutely terrifying. There's really nothing you can do if you ever encounter a serial killer in the woods. That's going to wrap up the scary forest iceberg. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content and there will be some links in the description for other videos such as the missing 411 video if you're interested. And stay tuned for the Adirondack hiking trip in the near future. And if you made it this far, thank you truly for watching.